So, um, so we talked about so antiderivatives, right? Antiderivatives just go in the opposite direction of a derivative. So when we're using the power rule, instead of subtracting a power, we add a power, right? So the power rule for antiderivatives, add a power. Whatever that new power is, that's what you divide by, right? That's that's the that's the new, um, or that's the power rule for antiderivatives. Because remember, derivatives, we move the power to the front, which is kind of like multiplication, right? And then we subtracted a power, right? We did two things, move the power to the front and then subtracted a power. Multiplication and subtraction. So now we're doing addition and division. So it's the opposite, okay? And then the last thing we talked about was trigs, trig functions. Just go in the opposite direction, right? Because if I were to find the derivatives of each of these in black here, the derivatives would be these guys here. So we're just going in the opposite direction, okay? Okay, so let's look at a next page at a um, trig. Okay, so we have, we have to find the antiderivative, the integral of four times the sine of x. Like I said, don't worry about that dx part. The dx part at the end, I'll tell you why it's there next week, but for right now, just go with it. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't change the problem. So, it's four times the sine, right? Well, one of our... examples dealt with that, right? Number five on the, on the rules we did on the first page, number five. If I have a constant times a function, right? So in this case, it's four times sine, right? I can move that guy to the front and then do the antiderivative of the rest. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, that four I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to put that 4 in the front of the integral sign. So now whatever I get as an antiderivative, I'll just multiply times 4. So really, 4 times sine of, sine of x dx. The antiderivative, well, the derivative of sine is cosine. The antiderivative of sine negative sine or negative cosine. So it would be four times, oops, not negative four, negative cosine of x plus c. Remember the plus c. Multiply these two guys, I get negative four cosine of x plus c. Okay. All right, let's look at number two. Number two is, looks like division. Six divided by cosine squared of x. I don't have a quotient rule, right? We talked about this yesterday. There's no product rule for antiderivatives. There's no quotient rule for antiderivatives. So I have to come up with a different way of doing this. So when you have a fraction, the easiest way or the most common way I would do is break it up. Break it up into two problems. So six times one over cosine squared of x. Still says the same thing, but I broke it up. So now with that six, I can move the six to the front. So I'm gonna move that six to the front. So that deals with that part. Now the one over cosine squared. Well, I do have some squares, right? On my list from the other page, from the page right before this, I do have some squares. Let's go see what squares I have. I have secant squared, number three, 
and I have cosecant squared, number four. Are any of those related to one over cosine squared? Secant, yeah, right? Because secant is really one over cosine, right? It's the, it's cosine, the reciprocal of cosine, right? Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. All right. So this guy here actually the whole thing. That is the same thing as secant squared. So it's six times the integral secant squared of x. Because one over cosine is secant. So one over cosine squared is one over, or is just secant squared. Okay. Now I can do that. Now I can actually find the antiderivative. It's going to be six times. Then the antiderivative of secant squared is tangent of x. So 6 times tangent of x plus c. Done. Okay. Number three, right below it. It's got a minus. They have a minus in the middle. There's a minus in the middle here. So... You could separate them. 9 cosine of x minus, oops, forget about dx. Minus 4 sine of x dx. Two into two smaller problems. You can do that. You don't have to. You can do it all at once, or you can break them up into two smaller. So now those two problems look like the ones we did earlier. So we can write 9, because 9 is a coefficient. 4 in the front. So go to my list. Let's go to my list now and see. So it would be 9 times the antiderivative of cosine. The antiderivative of cosine is sine. Minus. 4 times the antiderivative of sine. So go back up to my list. The antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. Okay. Negative cosine of x plus c. Always a plus c at the end. You only need one plus c. Always put it at the end. Okay, so it would be 9 times sine of x. You have negative and a negative, so it would be plus 4 cosine of x plus c. Okay. Okay. Number four. So again, number four is a fraction. Number four is a fraction. We don't have a quotient rule, so we have to figure out a way. So like I said earlier, when you have a fraction, first thing to do usually, break it apart. Break it apart the fraction and see what you have. Okay, so I have negative sine of x times one over cosine squared of x. 
dx. When I break it apart, that's what I have, right? We've seen this before. What is 1 over cosine? Secant, right? So let's change that to secant squared. So let's change this guy again to secant squared. So negative sine of x times secant squared of x dx. Let's see if that works. I'm not sure if it'll work, but let's try it. So now it's a negative sine of x times secant squared of x. I don't have a product rule. I have, I have, I have antiderivatives for both. And if that was a plus instead of a multiplication, if this was a plus here, I could do that. But I need like a product rule to do that. And I don't have that. And there is no, this is not on my list together, right? Secant squared and negative sine. I have a secant squared and I have a sine, but they're separate. It's not kind of like this guy here or this guy here. Those guys are together, right? I'm looking for one of these guys. I don't have those. So that, that way doesn't work. So let's take a look. Let's try to redo this. Let's start from scratch then. Let's try a different way. Let's draw a little arrow here. Right? This way didn't work. Is there another way I can break this up? I like breaking it up. But is there another way I can break up sine, sine of x and cosine of x? That would turn into something else. How many cosine, I have one sine of x, right? How many cosines do I have multiplied together? Two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of those cosines. I'm gonna take one of those cosines. So I'm gonna have negative sine of x. I'm gonna take one of those cosines and leave it with sine. What do I have left? I have one over just one cosine left. Let me try this. Okay, so let's look at this. Now I have two things. I have this guy and I have this guy. Do those turn into anything? Does the first one turn into anything, the orange one, sine over cosine? What is the relationship of sine divided by cosine? Tangent, right? It's got a negative, so it'll be negative tangent, right? And then one over cosine is secant. We talked about that. Is that on my list somewhere? Tangent, secant, that combination. It is number five, right? The only difference is I have a negative in front. I don't have, I don't want a negative in front, right? I have a, I have a negative in front of mine, but this one doesn't have a negative. So what can I do with that negative one? Because it's really a negative one, right? Bring it out to the front, yeah. Bring it out to the front because it's really a negative one. So really I can just move the negative one out to the front because it is a coefficient. Right? So we have negative one times the antiderivative of tangent secant or secant tangent is secant of x.
plus C. So it would be negative secant of X plus C. So when you have a fraction, like I said, break it up. Sometimes you don't break it up right the first one. It's okay. Try it again. Okay. Try it again. There's other ways to do it. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's look at the last page, very last page. So the very last thing we're going to do is build functions. We're going to build functions from the ground up. Okay. They're going to start with either a first derivative or a second derivative. And they want us to build up to f of x. We have to build up to f of x. That's when we got. So when we when we have f of x, when we built f of x, we're done. Okay. So where do we start? We start with what's given. I know that the derivative is 3x minus 1. Using that, how do I find f of x? Antiderivative, right? Antiderivative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the antiderivative of the derivative. That'll give me f of x, right? So I'm going to use the power rule. So I add a power, divide by a power. So I'm going to add a power, so it would be 3x squared divided by 2 minus... 1x. Because I add a power that's 1, divide by 1, you still get negative 1. Plus c, right? Plus c. Don't forget about the plus c. So this is f of x here. That's f of x. We're almost there. We haven't quite built f of x. I need to find out what c is. To do that, I'm going to use the point they given. They said, hey, on f, this point should be on, should work for f. When you plug in 2 for x, you should get 3 for f of x. So I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to plug in 3 for f of x. I'm going to plug in 2 for x. Solve for C. So I have 3 over 2 times 4 minus 2 plus C. And then I have equals 3. 3 over 2 times 4 is 12 over 2, which is just 6. So I have 6 minus 2 plus C equals 3. 6 minus 2 is 4, plus c equals 3. Subtract 4 from both sides. c is negative 1. So plug in negative 1 for c. Minus 1, since it's negative 1, and there you go. So that guy not only has the point 2, 3, not only when I plug in 2 for x will I get 3 as an answer, but when I find its derivative, it will be 3x minus 1. It works. Okay. All right, so let's try letter B now. Letter B, we have to start a little bit lower. 
we start at the second derivative. They've given us the second derivative. They've given us information about the first derivative and information about the original. But we have to start in the basement. We have to start the second derivative and work our way up. Okay. So the first thing is first derivative. How do I find the first derivative? Find the antiderivative. I only got two, so it's just two dx. So the antiderivative of two is just two x plus c. Okay, so before I go on to the original, because that's where I want to end, I want to end with the original, I have to figure out what c, what goes in there for c. So that's where I'm going to use the first one. That's where I'm going to use this yellow one here. When I plug in 4 to the derivative, I should get 0 as an answer. So 2 times 4 plus c. When I plug in 4 to the original, or sorry, to the derivative, I should get 0 as an answer. So 8 plus c equals 0. Subtract 8 from both sides to get c by itself. So the first derivative is going to be 2x minus 8. Okay, I'm not quite there. I'm halfway there. I've gone up one level, gone from second derivative up to first derivative. Now I need to go up another level. So I'm going to take the first derivative and create f of x. Same thing, antiderivative. Okay. So find the antiderivative of 2x minus 8. So the antiderivative would be add a power, divide by that power, and then 8 just gets an x plus c. So that's x squared minus 8x plus c. Last step, figure out what c is. Well, they told me when I plug in 4 to the original, I should get negative 1 as an answer. So when I plug in 4 for x, this time I should get negative 1. So I, everywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in a 4. Oops, negative one, four. And solve for C. I got 15. Last thing to do, replace it. Replace it up here. 
So f of x equals x squared minus 8x plus 15. And you're done. We had to go up two levels because we started from the second derivative. What? We are done. Okay, so I'm going to give you, I'll give you, let me see. I'm going to give you a few more problems to try on your own. Since we have some time, I want to give you a few more, and then we'll be done. So, so find some scratch paper. If you have some room on there, if you don't, just find some scratch paper to do a couple practice problems. And then we'll be done. Let's see, what's a good one? Let's do that. Okay, so x plus six. Find the antiderivative of that. And then Okay, so those two. Then we'll be done. Okay, so the green above it are the answers.